there was this kid, he, he, he had a locker, a, a locker, and then he was like, yeah, I, I'm going to close your locker, I'm going to close it, and I was like, uh, I was like, don't, don't close my locker, that's, that's mean. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, that's an old one, too. Uh, All right, you guys have been a subpar audience. Thank you, Ben Boynton. WK today. At least we're not that bad. Good mor Good afternoon, Captains. I'm Justin Mooney. And I'm Carson Ungar. Today is October 16, 2012, and we are coming to you live from Studio 304A. We... We have a breaking news report. Today you may have seen a couple of emergency vehicles in the Kettering parking lot. As of the moment, we do not have many details, but we would like to report that the student has received the necessary medical attention. And now on to, on to other news. Girls, if you are interested in playing soccer for Kettering in the spring and miss the informational meeting, please see Mrs. Jackson in the athletic office as soon as possible. There will be a wrestling meeting for all those who are interested for information on upcoming events and conditioning tomorrow at 2.40 after school in room 101. Kettering Varsity Hockey Team will be holding tryouts at Lakeland Ice Arena from Monday, October 29th at 3.30 and Thursday, November 1st at 4.30. Make sure you bring $15 each tryout. You must have a completed sports physical turn in to the athletic office before tryouts. The Friday's cupcake of the week will be Reese's peanut butter cupcake. They they have peanut they have peanut butter cups inside and out. You can get them in the cafeteria during lunch on Friday or for one dollar. Tomorrow night is the Americana concert, and Grace Hazlett caught up with some of the music directors to find out more about it. Tomorrow night, the music department will perform in its first concert of the year, the Americana Concert. The Americana Concert specifically brings us together as a music department for the first time. Uh, I think it was, we decided to do it because six weeks into school, we don't have a full concert in each discipline. So we ended up going, well, we need to have a first performance before collage. So we do a joint concert, which does not look like collage, but it's a small mini concert, mostly with our top groups. Doing an Americana concert means using music either written by American composers or written about America. Sometimes it is a patriotic theme, and sometimes it's just an American composer or somebody who's a celebrated composer. So it's at, basically it's a celebration of American music. From an educational standpoint, doing American music in an American school, um, hopefully the benchmarks for us as educators would be to have kids think about being American. The last four years we've done the Americana concert, so it's really an awesome experience for us to bring all of the parts of our music department together into one big concert. I always enjoy collaboration. I think education is based on um, working together. We're not an island, we are a community. But even with all the academic advantages, surely it is still difficult to put together a concert by October 17th? The challenges of putting together a concert in six weeks are huge. Um, it is a challenge, but these kids are up for the, up for the challenge. It, it kicks it off. It's, it's about getting started and let's go for it. The concert starts at 7 o'clock, admission is free, and there will be plenty of great music to hear. We're doing two, actually, um, Appalachian folk songs and they're done a cappella, and um, they're like a call to meeting kind of song. I know the Wind Ensemble students, that's our upper level band, they're very excited about presenting this piece called a Symphonic Gershwin, which is the music of George Gershwin, and it's a really wonderful arrangement. The Wind Ensemble also has a piece called Air Dublinesque, which is actually by um, rocker Billy Joel, and many people don't know that Billy Joel actually has written some classical music as well, and this piece is going to be a lot of fun to play. For WKHS-TV, this is Grace Hazlett. Thanks, Grace. The 25th Annual NAIAS 2013 High School Poster Contest is open to all Michigan residents enrolled in 10th, 11th, and 12th grade this year. The NAIAS 
will choose winners in 16 categories. Posters must be original artwork 25 by 21 inches in size, two-dimensional and camera ready. The poster theme must be automotive related and should include mixed media that is suitable for reproduction. This includes computer generated graphics. All subject matter must be in good taste. The deadline is November 20th. Here is the picture of the week. Here is the here sorry. Here is a picture of our teacher of the week. Congratulations, Mr. Woodman. In sports news, Today, girls volleyball will be serving it up against Pickney High School at the KLAA Conference Crossover. Freshmen and JV will be starting at 5 o'clock, and varsity starts at 6.30. Good luck, girls. Narrative Magazine is sponsoring a Narrative 30 Below contest. They are looking for entries of nar narratives from writers and creators between the age, ages of 18 and 30. This could include poems, short stories, essays, photo essays, audio and visual stories, graphic stories, and the expert excerpts from long, longer works. There is a first prize of $1,500. If you would like more information, please see Ms. Bell, Mrs. Bell. Now let's go to Connor and hear what some captains had to say about the October 11th vice presidential debate. I'm here with Ethan Gonzalez and I'm going to ask him a few questions on what he thought of the vice presidential debate. Now, Ethan, do you consider yourself politically active? Uh, yes, I do. Yep. So what was your take on the debate last night? It got pretty heated and they, they performed pretty well. What did you think? Um, I thought they both uh, provided a certain degree of professionalism. Uh, Paul Ryan a little more than Joe Biden, um, of course, because for anybody who watched, uh, Joe, Joe Biden was uh, very active in the smirking yeah. and the uh, interrupting. And, um, you know, Paul Ryan mostly focused on getting his message across. Well, I'm here with Tori Lanamo, who uh, watched the vice presidential debate. Tell us a little bit about what you're doing for newspaper that makes you pretty politically savvy. Well, in newspaper, I'm writing an opinion article on that many students here at Kettering don't take pride in their opinion and just go out and kind of take somebody else's. Okay, so that's based off their parents' mindset or yes. other things that they hear. Okay, now, having said that, when you watch the debate, is there anything that stood out to you that people should pay attention to and that, would, that influenced your opinion? Well, uh, what really influenced my opinion is that I'm not really um, for Republican or Democratic per se, but I think Paul Ryan did a really good job at being charismatic even if you forget the basic facts, I think he's going to be very, um, he's, he looks like a very approachable political figure. And he held his composure. Yes. Okay. Now, is there anything else you might add to any young voters or people watching right now who are interested in becoming active and voting? Any suggestions? Yeah, I think it's really important that if you're going to create such a strong opinion one way or the other, that you actually know what you're talking about and you do some research and you're well informed before you make such an opinion that you know you're going to get scrutinized for. So pay attention and keep yes. your eyes open. Yes. And your ears. Okay. Thank you very much, Tori. I'm here with Mr. Anderson who watched the vice presidential debate. Mr. Anderson, what were your expectations going in? I had very few expectations going in. Uh, you don't really learn anything from the debates besides who, who's uh, best composed and really that's how I think you should evaluate who the winner is or who the winner was, I guess. Now, who did you think would be the strongest contender? What were you thinking? Uh, exactly that. I mean, I, in terms of contender, not necessarily for who is going to, who's going to win in November, but I was expecting Ryan to have a better performance, and uh, I was expecting Biden's foot to be in his mouth <laughs> uh, relatively frequently. So. so were you impressed by the composure that both candidates presented? or I was, I was very impressed by Biden because I, I didn't feel like, I, I, I don't feel like his foot was in his mouth for most of the time and you know it was a it was interesting I, I don't think there was a clear-cut winner and maybe for Biden that is a that is a win yeah. so. and it, no it seemed to me that he was on the attack a lot like he let a lot of loose bullets fly was the same was that the same to you or I didn't I, I watched the first 45 minutes because I had a bad time and I didn't make it to the Tigers game either and uh, during that time I wouldn't I wouldn't say that he was necessarily on the attack, but he was definitely, 
he was more aggressive than I anticipated, or than we saw from Obama, because I, I do think you can anticipate a pretty aggressive Biden. So both the Democratic and the Republican tickets were well represented that night. Um, Would you say that? <laughs> I wasn't impressed either okay. way. Um, it, it's not going to change my opinion coming into uh, the November election. It was thoroughly entertaining. and as we talked about in each of my classes today. I was, I was thoroughly entertained all the way through. Well, I guess that's what f debates are for in the long run, especially in America. Absolutely. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Anderson. Thanks, Connor. And if you are interested in learning more about current politics, make sure to check out Tori Lenemo's article in the upcoming Murmur issue, which comes out October 29th. That's all we have for you today, Captains. I'm Carson Ungard. And I'm Justin Mooney. Have a great day, Captains.